We are now up against live, hostile targets. So, if Little Red Riding Hood should show up with a bazooka in a bad attitude, I expect you to chin the bitch. Originally, I planned to cover a different film entirely this week, but like many people, I'm in film groups on various social media platforms, and someone asked what people in the group thought were the best werewolf movies. And I instantly thought to myself, dog soldiers. Then I thought, well, I haven't seen that in ages, and now I want to watch it. And so since I was watching it, I also thought I'd make a video on exactly why I think it's the best werewolf movie. Now, when I say Dog Soldiers is the best werewolf movie, what I really mean is it's one of three films that, depending on the day of the week and what mood I'm in, I will tell you is the best or is my favourite. But 8 out of 10 times, it's probably Dog Soldiers. The other two being Ginger Snaps and An American Werewolf in London. Both of those films are probably better films than this one, but Dog Soldiers is way more entertaining to me. Ginger Snaps I already made a video about, so if you want to hear my in-depth views on that, then go watch that video. But TLDR, it has a really great story that is essentially a very clever allegory for puberty. It takes the lycanthrope tropes and turns them into allegorical teen angst brilliantly. An American Werewolf in London, on the other hand, has some of the most stunning practical effects and human-to-werewolf transitions you will ever see. Dog Soldiers has a bunch of British soldiers swearing, fighting and bantering their way through 105 minutes of lycanthropic hell, and it's entertaining as all fuck. And here's exactly why. The story for Dog Soldiers is a fairly simple one and is often criticised for being tropey. And that is a fair enough criticism because the film does rely on a few well-worn tropes of the genre. But personally, I don't think it's too huge a problem because the narrative is just a vehicle for violence to happen. And it does that incredibly well and leads to a whole bunch of entertainment. The first 15 to 20 minutes introduces us to the world and characters, so we as an audience know there are werewolves from the very first scene. Subsequent scenes are used to introduce us to our six squaddies, who have on the face of it been dropped into the Scottish Highlands on a routine training mission. Then this happens. The dog, and we're surprised the dog turns wrong. <laughs> Fucking cow! <laughs> which introduces us to two things that are going to be constant throughout the rest of the film. The banter between the soldiers and the absolute oodles of glorious gore and practical effects the film has going on. Firstly, the banter. This came out in 2002 when I was in my early 20s, and the banter in this film is exactly the kind of thing that entertained me then and still entertains me now. Blokes being blokes, which is wonderfully summed up by one of the characters' reactions to the cow almost falling on them. Is everyone all right? Is everyone OK? No, man, I think I've shipped myself. The film is full of such lines that any Northern English working-class lad in their late teens and early twenties would find both badass and hilarious in equal measure. Like this one later on in the film, right after this character has almost been eaten alive. I love it when a posh bear talks dirty. This plus... Their obsession with the England v Germany result makes the squaddies relatable and endearing, because we all know a spoon or a joe. The second part of this scene that is pivotal to my love of this film is the gore and practical effects. There is oh so much glorious gore throughout. I don't know for sure, but they honestly look like they just threw an actual cut up dead cow onto the actors without telling them what they were doing because they genuinely look like they actually do shit themselves with shock as they get sprayed with rancid cow guts. Later on, we get guts hanging out of people's stomachs, which also, yes, leads to a brilliant bit of banter. Literal pools of gore that were once a soldier and a whole bunch of practical gore effects that have passed the test of time. The werewolves are also costumes with dancers inside so that they move more gracefully as the director thought that would be how werewolves move. With the film choosing to show them very sparingly at first and increasingly towards the conclusion. Using old school editing techniques and camera blocking to allow transformations to take place rather than CGI being used, 
mainly because the director and writer, Neil Marshall, didn't like the CGI in use at the time and thought it would distract from the story. I also kind of like that because I often think in these kinds of creature feature movies, less is more in the case of the creatures because it actually helps to build tension. It also forces the movie to be edited together in such a way that action scenes and glimpses of the creatures are far more impactful and realistic than if you just see an obviously fake CGI one. We even get a miniature house explosion at the end. Yeah, it looks like what it is, a miniature exploding, but it does at least look like a real explosion rather than a cheap After Effects plug-in like most modern action movies use, especially low budget ones. Now, once the cow has been dropped on the squaddy's heads, the real story begins and it's effectively a breakneck recreation of Zulu crossed with aliens. Two movies reference several times each in this film. Both movies where a handful of soldiers face off against an overwhelmingly powerful force in a remote and isolated location. In this film, it's five squaddies in a Scottish farmhouse that was actually shot in Luxembourg against three werewolves. Along the way, we get ample opportunity for the squaddies to be absolute badasses in a bunch of uh, thrilling action scenes. Admittedly, we do get two fairly obvious twists in this narrative that if you've ever seen a movie, especially Alien or Aliens, you will see coming a mile away. I won't spoil them here, but suffice to say, neither twist being so obvious ever ruins my enjoyment of the film because it really is all about the badass action scenes. They even go as far as to bare fist fight a werewolf, with Spoon going out in style with this one-liner. I hope I give you the shit, you fucking wimp. The cast and acting is also great throughout. Uh, Kevin McKidd is an actor who is in three of my favourite movies and TV shows. Train Spotting, the TV show Rome, and of course this flick. He's once again awesome in this and carries huge amounts of the film. Sean Pertwee gives the greatest acting drunk you will ever see in any film ever. Is it my birthday? Hey! <laughs> no. Are you going to thank us for this in the morning? I'll tell you something, mate. I'm going to fucking thank you. Right now, I'm going to thank you because you saved my life. You got me out of there, mate. Allegedly, this is because he was actually drunk when they shot the scene. Either way, him and Kevin McKidd are absolute gold whenever they are on screen together. The rest of the cast are largely unknown British and Irish actors, who based on this film should have gone on to have way better careers than they did, with Game of Thrones' very own Davos, Liam Cunningham being the only member of the supporting cast who went on to bigger fame, giving a great performance as the somewhat shadowy Captain Ryan. When you put all of that together, you get what is in my opinion the best werewolf movie ever made, yet yeah, Ginger Snaps has a more intelligent and clever narrative, and yes, American Werewolf in London has by far better special effects. But neither of them, in my opinion, is anywhere near as goddamned entertaining as Dog Soldiers is, which is why most of the time, it's my favourite out of the three. Let me know in the comments what your favourite werewolf movie is, and maybe even like this video and subscribe to the channel if you aren't already.